Taking my time as the sun it shines On me and everyone that has come to find This world is cruel but there's nothing new Living in the moment is the only truth But let's go slow mm. Living in the moment is the only truth But let's go slow Sorted towns are where I'd rather be They give me love and they set me free The ocean's tides can live without the moon And all in the same goes for me and you Let's go slow mm. Living in the moment is the only truth Let's go slow Living in the moment is the only truth Let's go slow mm -hmm. Living in the moment is the only truth no. Let's go slow Good morning. So it is a beautiful blue sky day here in sunny Queensland and I thought it would be the perfect opportunity to get down and have a look at this orchard. Uh, it's another one of those things that just got abandoned while I was pregnant and it really suffered. Um, it didn't get watered and a few things have pulled through but we've had a lot of loss which is really unfortunate but it's time to get down there and just see what's still okay um, what needs to be pulled out and uh, just do a bit of you know maintenance <laughs> so um, I'm gonna head down there now I'll give you a short tour of the very sad looking state of affairs and then we'll get into whatever work we need to get done I should also say that you would have seen me planting a couple of trees down there uh, in the intro. So that was a mulberry tree and a fig tree that my parents uh, gave me. They had taken um, cuttings from theirs and I was able to put those in my yard. So we'll check those out as well because they've been in for probably a good week now. Um, and they're do both doing good, so I will give you a look at those as we do our little tour as well. Okay, first to get you orientated with where we are, this is obviously the veggie patch that we've been working a lot in recently. Up on that terrace is the chicken coop, and then if you come back down here, this is the orchard. So the only thing I think we've previously looked at is this is the nectarine tree that we covered a couple of months ago, a month or so ago, um, and it's doing really well. I actually am going to take that cover off, I think, and put just a bag on the, <laughs> looks like single fruit that is still developing, um, just to let it, you know, have a bit more access to air and whatnot, since we don't need the whole thing covered if there's only one fruit. But yeah, that's where it all is. It's in the lowest part of our property. There is a creek that runs through here that is dry most of the time. It's only if we have heavy, heavy rain that that fills up. And only very briefly. Okay, let's go for a quick tour of this area. So this was the citrus area down here and I think most of them are dead. So this one was a orange tree, a Valencia orange and pretty sure that one is, yeah, that one is dead. <laughs> so that one's going to come out. This here is a lemon tree and unfortunately it is also dead looks like there is a little bit of a shoot down here 
but it's coming from below the graft so it's going to have to come out as well then we got this which is a lime tree i think it's tahitian lime uh yes tahitian lime and it is actually alive which is amazing um it's had a bit of a rough time so i probably need to cut off these like dead endy bits but it is flowering and it is actually even starting to fruit so this i need to cover with some sort of protection uh, to stop it from getting destroyed by the um, possums and kangaroos because uh, they will like to eat this um, which is why a lot of these branches have no leaves because they have been eaten so that's on our list of jobs to do then we have the nectarine tree which has leafed out really nicely um, and it produced a few fruit but it has dropped most of them. When I was down here, I could only find this single fruit here that was hanging on. So I think we probably need to uncover this and just cover that fruit up. My only hesitation with that is that there is a chance that the possums and kangaroos could start to eat this tree. It's a fairly large tree now, so hopefully it will be able to withstand that. So I think we'll give it a try and see what happens, and we can always cover it up again if it starts to get attacked. Then we have this stick here. This was an apple tree. Um, clearly it is no longer alive, uh, so that needs to come out. That was a big pity. And then we have this tree, which is probably the one that is doing the best down here in the orchard and it is a macadamia tree a dwarf macadamia so i'm very excited about that we might even get flowers this year um, but it is growing really really well so that's awesome over here we have a longan tree which is also doing reasonably well so that's all fine Nothing's ever eaten this, so I don't think I need to do anything to cover it or anything. Okay, and then down here, another very sad tale. This mango tree is, I'm pretty certain, is dying. Um, I think it's a case of I accidentally killed it. Uh, so the problem is with this mango I think I killed it um, it was doing pretty good it had grown quite tall um, probably slightly taller than I am and I was like well all it's done is gone up in a single shoot it hasn't branched out at all so I did a bit of research and everything I was reading was saying when it gets to about you know one one meter tall top it and then it'll branch out so that's what I did and Ever since then, the leaves started dying and it does not look happy. So, anyway, we'll uh, trim it off again below all that dead and see if it will reshoot. And uh, if not, I suppose we'll be getting a new mango tree. <laughs> oh, such a pity. Okay, then this is the first of the new arrivals. This is a fig tree that my parents gave us it seems to be doing okay with its transplant and then we have another fig tree here which has been here since last year and it has a green shoot on it but it hasn't done anything so i don't know how it's going really we'll see if it actually leaves out or not and then we've got bananas which these are a dwarf banana, which is why they're short. They seem to be doing quite well. They've got lots of new leaves, so we'll just leave them and see what happens there. Um, this was our failed strawberry patch. Transplanted all these strawberries up into the Mr. Stucky planter that is up in the veggie patch. They're doing much better up there. So this just needs to be cleaned up because um, it looks like a mess at the moment. Then we have two more citrus here. This one, I think they're both mandarins actually. Uh, this one, oh, spider. Spider's web. Okay. 
this is a hicker hicks and mandarin and it has a couple of green leaves so i probably need to trim it back and give it a good water and fertilize and see if it will come back to life this one is a this one is a honey merclot mandarin and it has no leaves but it still has some green branches so again i think i need to trim it back give it some fertilizer and a heap of water and mulch it and see if we can get it to come back to life next to the uh, mandarins we have a dragon fruit which has grown a heap um so it's doing really well um not sure if we'll get any fruit off it this year that's okay it's just doing its thing and finally across the creek we have the new mulberry tree so i'm pretty sure this is a dwarf mulberry which is good it'll only get probably to two to four meters um, but it has transplanted really well and um, my little protection from the kangaroos and possums seems to be doing the job and it's definitely pushed out some new leaves since I planted it so that's great hopefully it will be happy here and we'll get lots of mulberries okay so now it's time to actually get some work done I uh, brought down the garden cart so that I can pick up a heap of rubbish that's down here like the broken cage from the strawberry bed and that sort of thing and take that away and I think my first thing I want to do is cover this lime tree I actually think I'm just going to steal one of the covers off one of the dead citrus because I don't need it anymore and uh, we'll get that covered and then we'll see how much more we can get done before the baby wakes up So I covered this nectarine tree with this netting uh, right after it finished flowering in the early, early spring. Actually, it might be still late winter. Um, it flowered quite early uh, because we have the Queensland fruit fly here and the fruit fly um, gets into the fruit and absolutely destroys it, it makes it inedible. Uh, and the only way to really stop it is to cover your fruit. So we do it with tomatoes and capsicums and all sorts of things. And nectarines is certainly one of the things we need to do it with. I covered the whole tree because at that stage I had plenty of fruit that was developing. But over time um, the fruit has dropped off and we've only, looks like we've got one left. Uh, I'm not surprised, it's only a really young tree still. And, you know, we haven't been getting a lot of rain. I've been trying to water it as much as I can, but um, it's quite dry at the moment, so it's probably um, dropped the fruit because of that. So what I'm going to do is, I don't need to cut the whole tree now, because we've only got that one fruit that's developing, so I'm just going to put a little bag over that single fruit, and we will uncover the rest of the tree. The, the, this is probably not the best cover, seems to be doing the job but in the future I might try and erect some sort of cover that is not directly on the tree because it is certainly weighing down on the branches uh, so it'd be nice to get it off um, so let's do that <laughs>
to fertilize it now as well. I'm just using an organic pellet fertilizer um, that is good for flowers and veggies and fruits and lawns apparently. Um, so it's pretty like, yeah, standard one in that it's not targeting a certain thing. It gives gives your NPK as well as a heap of different um, minerals. So like your calcium, magnesium, iron, copper, all those sorts of things. So I thought it was a pretty good one to put on the um, orchard as well as my veggie patch. I've just sort of scraped it in a little bit there and then I'm going to cover it with some um, fresh mulch. And then we'll water it in. Um, I've already covered, I've already done the same to the lime tree and I'm just going to work my way around the orchard and fertilize everything and mulch everything that is still alive. Just using the uh, sugar cane mulch will help with water retention, keep the weeds down. Look. Let's dig out a couple of dead plants next. So I'm just clearing off all of the dead leaves and uh, clipping them off with my velcros and then we're going to layer those around the base of these as a bit of mulch. Um, I'll fertilize them and then we'll top up with a bit more of the sugarcane mulch. Um, just making sure not to put it right on the bases of the bananas because they don't like that. Um, this should get them tidied up nicely. So for our last Hail Mary with this 
um, mango tree. I've fertilized it, we've put some mulch on, and now I'm going to work out where the dead starts. Which I think might be about, okay, that's still green. That's dead. Okay, so I think I'm going to chop it here. Uh, take off that dead pit. So we've got a dead leaf here, so maybe I'll chop it down here where, because there's a new bud there. So let's chop it above that new bud, um, somewhere here. Get rid of this dead part and uh, hope that it comes back to life with a bit of fertilizer and I will try to get a heap of water onto it as well. Okay, so here goes nothing. I'm gonna go a little bit away from that bud. We'll come up maybe about here where I knew there was green. <sighs> Looks really, really sad now. It was so big. Now it's not. I'll have to get my husband to come down and get this steak out as well because it clearly does not need it anymore. Uh, but I can't get it out. Okay, so that was the last of the trees down here that needed mulching and fertilizing and trimming. And now all I've got to do is water and then it's a general cleanup. So we've got sticks and logs and bits of wire and bits of pipe. They all need to be cleaned up. So I um, think that might be the job for the next of my son's step. Come down here and do an emu parade. Pick up all this mess. So I'm going to attempt to put some sort of fence around this area as well. I got something put around the rosellas and the melons. Is it very well done? No. Please, just enough of a barrier to stop them. If it's a kangaroo, I've got absolutely no hope because they'll just hop over this with no problem. But if it's a possum, maybe it's enough. So uh, we will just keep an eye on it. I've taken the baskets off the melons, so I guess they're going to be our indicators. We come back tomorrow, and they've been eaten, then we know this hasn't worked. Um, but fingers crossed, we have done enough to protect them. So that's it for today. I am going to head up now and get a few things done before my toddler gets home from daycare. This was a project that took every single one of my sun snaps to get done. So yeah, haven't really got much else done today. So I better go and you know start dinner and all of those things. Well, I hope you've enjoyed 
watching me potter around in the orchard and I hope you got out in your own gardens today and have a great day and I will see you on the next one. Bye guys.